Hello, I'm Saeed Ali Abbas Zaidi from Pakistan. I'm a counter-extremism activist. What led me to counter-extremism work is uh, my personal journey uh, to give back something to the world and to Pakistan. I started off as an aeronautical engineer, that's my qualification, and I worked in the sector uh, making missiles and radars for the military industrial complexes. But then I realized that I have to make more positive contribution to the world and stop making these bombs. And that is incidentally when Pakistan saw um, an incident in which SWAT was taken over by Taliban and uh, I realized that this is something that I could help with because no one else was doing it. Fight against extremism in Pakistan is, is to me a matter of life and death. It's a part of my soul, it's a part of, uh, it's a part of my personal desire to see Pakistan as a country which is more progressive than what it is today. So in the way the world has evolved in the last uh, two decades, civil society has become an important part of how citizens engage with the state and how engage with the international community. And that is why civil society is very important when it comes to politics and culture and fighting the menaces that we see in the world currently. Civil society uh, is defined in different ways by different academics and by different political scientists, but it's, it essentially means that citizens contributing for social good towards their society and, uh, and towards the world, not just their own society. Um, and civil society is something that is um, a target of political uh, propaganda, it's a, it's a target of media groups, it's a target of extremist organizations, and that is why it's very important to have counter-extremism movements harness the potential of civil society to create a, to form a better world. Um, but to do that, in order to do that, we need to first understand what extremism is and, and for that we need to build the capacity of civil so society to formulate educated responses to organize extremism and violence um, that we see in the world today. There are different kinds of work that civil society actors can do to fight extremism in different parts of the world. One is development. A lot of research has shown that extremism, ex extremist movements make use of grievances, uh, legitimate grievances of the people like poverty, like unemployment, like inequality. They use that for their political propaganda and to recruit more members. So what civil society actors can do is they can um, develop infrastructures, they can build more schools, they can, they can provide health services and stuff like that. So that's de developmental work leading to counter-violent extremism. Then there is um, there's a way in which there's a realm of ideas in which you counter the extremist narrative. The extremists have their own version of what Islam should be or is like, and that's only a tiny representation of what the scholars and the Muslim philosophers and intellectuals believe. So the other, in the realm of ideas, you fight ideas and with ideas, and you say that this is not the complete or the absolute version of what Islam says, what uh, jihad means and how we should uh, rally for or fight for our rights, what extremists say. So um, in the realm of ideas, you fight an, an extremist narrative. I'll give an example. For example, the, the patron narrative is that West is against Islam. West is harming Islam. And that's why extremist movements recruit uh, using anti-Americanism, anti-NATOism uh, and stuff like that. But it's not true. There are many Muslims living in, in Western countries who engage in their religion, who perform their religious duties, and who contribute to their countries. And um, the, the world has changed. It's not a religious... Wars are not caused by religious uh, theologies anymore. Um, so if we counter this narrative of extremists that West is not against Islam, and Islam is not against West, we are countering a very important narrative around which movements like ISIS and Al-Qaeda are based. Um, the third kind of counter-extremism that civil society can engage with is social innovation, research and resource development. We can innovate ways by researching uh, for entry points into fighting extremism within our confines and within our social settings. The fourth way to counter-extremism for the civil society is to promote arts and culture because arts and culture are intrinsically progressive. When you create art or, or when you evolve culture, it automatically uh, fights extremism. And there's, there's a lot of research behind this that wh wherever the extremist movements took over, they first of all targeted the, 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 the Sufi mystics, the musicians, the artists, the dancers, the, the cinemas, 
the, the CD shops which were selling movies and stuff like that, there's a reason for that because they believe that this is a threat to their very reductionist ideology. So whenever uh, an activist, a counter-extremism activist or a civil society actor is holding an event promoting arts and culture, poetry, music, uh, film, cinema, um, or whatever, it, it's, it's automatically countering extremism. Extremist movements world over have used activism to uh, hijack public spaces. And that is why it's very important for people like us to reclaim public spaces from extremist messaging and to have our public spaces to better and more vibrant forms of activism. So over the period of last two decades, uh, a new development world over has taken place. The society has essentially reorganized itself around technology, around internet, and there is this civil society that we keep on hearing about. And we are all part of the civil society, no matter if you are a government employee or a member of a political party or working for an NGO or a journalist. And that's why our responsibility as being a global citizen has increased. Um, civil society all over the world is very important because it establishes the social norms that end up impacting politics and policy. And that is why it's very important that everyone who wants to fight extremism must collaborate with each other. The sportsmen must collaborate with the musicians, the musicians must collaborate with the policy makers, the politicians must talk to the youth, the teachers should talk to the students, and the society should have this cross-sectional, uh, cross-pollination of ideas fighting extremism. The second is we must con contextualize um, extremism. Extremism exists in different manifestations in different parts of the world. Counter-extremism would be different in London as compared to what would be in Leari in Karachi. It would be different in Morocco. It would be different in DC. Having one solution for all these manifestations of extremism is counterproductive. We should, we should get rid of the ethnocentric versions of counter-extremism and uh, have our counter-extremism rooted in, uh, centered in the, the, the local dynamics of that particular area. Uh, the third is we must learn to innovate because extremism is changing its color all the time. Today it's ISIS. ISIS is just a, is one representation of extremism. There, it exists in many different colors. Right-wing extremism, there's xenophobia, there's Islamist extremism, there's sometimes Christian fund fundamentalism, there are the different variants of it. We must understand that we need to innovate in order to challenge this, you know, in order to wrestle with extremism because they're constantly changing their color and the way they engage with the politics is, uh, is very dynamic.